Today we want to deal particularly with the five departments in the underworld of departed spirits. Now you that have your Bible chart, you have this lesson illustrated for you at the bottom of the chart, almost all the way across the chart. You notice a green line on your Bible chart from the Garden of Eden to the end of the millennium. That represents the grave, the place of the body, the place where only the body goes. Then be below that green line, you'll have five departments in the underworld of departed spirits. And we will deal with them one at a time. So I want you to use your Bible chart if you have it and follow along with us in this lesson. The first department you will notice is called Tartarus, found in 1 Peter 3.19, called a prison, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. The word Tartarus is found only one time, and that's in 2 Peter 2.4, where we read the angel of that sin he hath cast down to hell, or Tartarus, in the Greek, and reserved them in chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. This is also referred to in Jude 6 and 7. The angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner. That is, as did these angels, gave themselves over to fornication, went after strange flesh, are set forth for the suffering of vengeance and eternal fire. This prison is a special one for the fallen angels that sinned both before and after the flood as we have already discussed in previous studies. No human beings or demons ever go into this department, as we know from Scripture. It is the first prison in the, on the chart and under the dispensation of conscience and human government, as you can see. In these passages, it is clear that there is a real hell that is not the grave, and the spirits are confined in chains until the judgment. Now you can call the human hell the grave all you want to, but here is a hell for angels, and yet the same ones who call the grave hell tell us that angels are immortal and cannot die. So they'll have to agree at least that there is a hell for angels that isn't the grave if they don't want to believe the rest of the Bible concerning the doctrine of hell. How are we going to be foolish enough to, ex to believe that the extinction, that this refers to the extinction of angels and the unconsciousness of angels? said they're reserved in chains under darkness. Why would they have to be in chains if they're not conscious, if they're not alive, if, they, if they're, it's not a possibility out of escaping or something? So here is one prison that they cannot possibly call the grave. In paradise is the second department in the underworld of departed spirits illustrated on your Bible chart under the dispensation of law right under the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It's referred to in Luke 16, 19 to 31 as Abraham's bosom, which is simply another name for paradise. And it's called paradise in Luke 23, 43. Jesus said to the thief on the cross today, shalt thou be with me in paradise. So this is the second prison on the chart and was the prison of all the righteous souls before the resurrection of Jesus Christ for the righteous only. All the righteous went into this prison and were held captive by the devil against their wills, according to Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. For we read, For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. In Ephesians 4, 7 to 11, we read that when Christ ascended on high, he led captivity captive. And it adds there, he that ascended on high is the same also that descended first into the lower parts of the earth. That proves that he went to hell and liberated all the righteous souls who are in a comfort department in hell, or Hades, or Sheol. Took all those righteous souls out of that prison and took them to heaven with him when he ascended on high. The devil had the power of death before Christ conquered the underworld of departed spirits and liberated them and got the keys of hell and of death for himself. It was in this prison that the penitent thief and, and Christ went on the day that they were crucified, according to Luke 23, 43. 
That is located in the lower parts of the earth in the, as, as stated in Ephesians 4 and Matthew 12, 40. Christ was not only in this prison, but he went to Tartarus and preached to the angels. He made some kind of an announcement according to 1 Peter 3, 19 to the angels. Not an announcement of salvation, but some other announcement evidently to, dis, to do away with any hope of their ever escaping their penalty. In fact, according to all the scriptures, we read that Christ conquered death, hell, and the grave during his crucifixion and during his three days that his body was in the grave and he himself was in the underworld of departed spirits. He now has the keys of hell and of death. Ever since Christ liberated the righteous from paradise and took all those captive souls captive to heaven with him, now when a Christian dies, he goes to be with Christ, which is far better. Paul expressed in 2 Corinthians 5, 8 and Philippians 1, 21 to 23 and other scriptures. Oh, Revelation 6, 9 to 11 picture the righteous in heaven. And also, we have the same thing in Hebrews 12, 23. The spirits of just men made perfect who are now residing in heaven. This place is now empty unless the present hell has been enlarged to take in what was formerly paradise. Many Bible scholars believe this and use Isaiah 5, 14 to prove this. And uh, if it's all, if that's all, if it happened, then that's all right. But it is nothing but a theory. There's no definite proof one way or the other. Then we come to a third prison in the underworld of departed spirits. Matthew 16, 18, we read of the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Then we read of the rich man in hell. Luke 16, 19 to 31. Lift up his eyes, being in torment. There is then a third place where the wicked go and where they will continue to go until the end of the millennium. All the wicked went in this department and will continue to go in this department until the end of the millennium. And then we read according to Revelation 20 verses 11 to 15 that death and hell will deliver up the dead which are in them and death and hell will be judged every man according to his works and death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. We read in Luke 16, 19 to 31 of a great gulf between the two departments. Thus, there were two prisons in the underworld of departed, departed spirits for the human beings. One a place for the righteous, one a place for the wicked, with a great gulf between the two. The one where the righteous were, it is now empty, and the wicked still continue to go in the place where they have been going ever since the wicked started to die since the days of Adam. It will continue to go, as we've said, until the end of the millennium. Now the third department in the underworld of departed spirits is that of the, or rather the fourth one, is that of the bottomless pit. Mentioned in Job 26, 5, and Psalms 88, Proverbs 15, 11, and, and several Old Testament scriptures. In the New Testament, the Greek word is abusus, which literally means abyss an immeasurable depth. It is very, it is a very deep chasm in the lower parts of the earth. It is translated deep in Luke 8, 26 to 31 and Romans 10, 7. Translated bottomless pit, Revelation 9 and Revelation 11, 17 and chapter 20. Four chapters in Revelation called the bottomless pit. Revelation 9, for example, we read of an angel coming down from heaven with a key to the bottomless pit, he will open the pit and smoke will come out of the pit which will darken the sun. Demon creatures will come out of the pit as described in Revelation 9. Two kinds of them. One the kind will, dis will torment men for five months. Another kind will destroy one third of men at a certain hour of a certain year. Then we read in Revelation 13 and 17 and also the 11th chapter, verse, verse 7 of the beast coming out of the bottomless pit. In Revelation 20, we read of the Antichrist, or rather the dragon, being put into the bottomless pit for the thousand years to deceive the nations no more till the thousand years are finished. Then we have another prison, a fifth one on the Bible chart, and that's called the Lake of Fire, or the Gehenna of Fire, as Jesus expressed it, translated in the New Testament in the days, of, or that is, in the Gospels, as Hell Fire. Also, in the book of James, a third chapter, 
This is called the second death, or the lake of fire. It is mentioned in Revelation 2 and 20, and in Matthew 25, 41 to 46, Revelation 14, 9 to 14, Isaiah 66, 22 to 24, and other scriptures. This is the eternal hell and perdition of all rebels in the universe. All the other prisons will deliver up the prisoners that are in them. Tartarus will, del will deliver up the angels. Hell will deliver up the dead which are in it. And the bottomless pit will, del will deliver up the creatures that are in it. And they will all be judged at the great white throne judgment as pictured at the right hand top corner of your Bible chart. Then they will be all cast into the lake of fire where they will be tormented day and night forever and ever according to the scriptures. So the present hell, the present place for the wicked is a temporary place. And the wicked will continue to go there until the end of the millennium. Read Revelation 20 verses 11 to 15 and it will tell you plainly that death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and death and hell were judged every man according to his works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Thus there are five prisons in the underworld of departed spirits. There's only one prison now for the wicked, and that's the temporary place. But there, And there will only be one prison for all rebels in the universe, and that will be the lake of fire. And you can consider that as the eternal hell and perdition of all rebels in the universe, including all the angels and demons and human beings and all rebels that have rebelled against God from the very beginning, from the time that Lucifer rebelled until the present time. 